Hello, can you hear me, guys? Can you hear me? Yes, miss. Oh, perfect. Hi, how are you, Jose? Yes, I'm fine. Nice. <laughs> Happy <laughs> to hear that. I was worrying because my uh my laptop said like check your speaker and I was like, what? What's going on? <laughs> but okay. nice. If you can hear me, we're good. That's what we did. Yes. So, let's see. Today is day number two. I know it's Thursday. I know it's Thursday, but for us, this is like huge day. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. During the week. So let's see. We have five people connected. Hi, Juan Carlos. Hi, Mauricio. Hi, Emily. Hi. Good job for being early, guys. <laughs> Good evening, teacher. How are you? I'm happy. Nice. Be happy. <laughs> yeah, start the class. Yay, that's the attitude, guys. <laughs> Just a minute, please. Okay. I'm sorry if you see me sweating. It's because okay. I was working out before this. So, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm joking. It's because it's really hot in here. Probably it's gonna rain. Let's hope that it's. Is it raining in your area? Is it oh. raining in your area? No. 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 No, right? It's like no. we're supposed to be in winter. We're supposed to have rain every day, but we don't have any rain at all. <laughs> we barely have any rain. I just, I don't understand how winter works. I feel, I don't know if you guys feel the same but I feel like this winter is hotter than summer do you think do you agree yes miss right it feels like it's worse than the summer because in <laughs> summer it's hot good evening. it's dry and then here it's really hot and humid good evening Vladimir how are you very hot <laughs> yeah Okay, so remember to keep yourselves hydrated. Also, I wanted to tell you guys, if you feel that you need to drink coffee, soda, water, or if you need to have your dinner during the class, feel free to do so, okay? I'm not going to tell you anything. It's fine. You can be eating or doing <laughs> or drinking things. That's, that's perfectly fine for me, okay? All right. So who remembers what were we talking about last night? What was last night's topic? Uh, distribution. Yeah, exactly. We started. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We started talking about distribution channels. And what is a distribution channel? Who can tell me in your words first? What is a distribution channel? Good evening, teacher. Uh, the distribution. For me, um, I, I think it's the different ways for the different uh, manufacturer or products, producers um, send or ship or buy the different product for the clients in the different ways. And uh, wall sellers, uh, yesterday, so in the class, they exist the different ways for for example wall sellers retailers or the the direct uh, vendor or mm -hmm. uh, yeah yeah um, exactly yeah. that's one way to put it that's right thank you Jorge that's a good summary who else okay. who has another idea or another version of what you remember is a distribution channel um, teacher, good evening. Uh, uh, exists two way um, the distribution channel is a directly channel and indirect channel. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we we took um, um, intermediate uh, business um, took about um, different ways for or give the, the, the product uh, at the end consumer, mm -hmm. um, suppliers. Exactly, mm -hmm. that's basically, those are very good summaries, Jorge and Juan Carlos, thank you, right? 
So last night, that's what we started talking about. Now, if if you take a look, you will see, if you Google it, you will see that when you talk about distribution channels, you need to talk about marketing also, right? Marketing strategies and different types of vendors and that, and strategies also. So this is going to be like a commerce class more than an English class. <laughs> it's going to be like a commerce class, but in English for you guys, okay? So we're going to be learning a lot on that on that specific okay so before we begin let me load the presentation for you guys just a minute and we're gonna see we're gonna see some vocabulary okay this this is not all the words that you will find about it but it's some of the vocabulary that is related okay so and let me know when you see the presentation, please. Can you see the presentation now? Yes, it's just... Nice, yes. thank yes. you. Okay, so in here, we have a very specific image. What kind of place does this image remind you? Where have we seen this type of arrangement? It's not a supermarket, right? A gas not... station. Exactly. It's very similar to the arrangement we see in a gas station. And believe it or not, a gas station could also work as a retailer, right? So we're going to start seeing a lot of vocabulary regarding uh, distribution channels. This is the first word that we're going to check. And then we're going to move to this one, these other ones, okay? We're going to be reading them. And we're going to be explaining them because we're going to use them in conversation, okay? So let's begin with the first one, right? Manufacturing sales agents. We're going to, each person is going to be reading one of the words, okay? And the meaning. The first one we have here, it's the manufacturing sales agent. Who wants to read that part? Raise your hand, please, or let me know. Okay, <clears throat> Manufacturing sales agents. These are independent con contractors who promote a company product but cannot make commitments on behalf of the company they represent. They work on the com commission and heavy products where the market is too small for the manufacturer to have a full-time sales representative. All right, very good. So the manufacturing sales agent, notice this part is important because it's not sales agent only, it's manufacturing sales agent, right? And in fewer words, and here is the thing, every time you read one of the words, you're going to be requested to explain what you read in your own version, okay? So, for example, in this case, uh, he was mentioning, these are independent contractors, right? And they promote the company's products, not their company, other companies' products, right? But they cannot make commitments about them, right? And they cannot make profit. So, that's, that's one part, right? The manufacturing sales agent, they only distribute it. They don't make commissions from them, okay? And then let's see the rest of the vocabulary. One, one, large private label, specialty retail distributors. Remember pronunciation, distributor, distributor, right? Not a street yeah. and not anything else, distributors, okay? Uh, right, distributors. Then this one sounds like a ho, wholesalers, okay? We don't say what, we say ho, wholesalers. Wholesaler, the wholesaler distribution distributors, wholesaler distributors, okay, and then the rack jobbers. We're gonna see those also. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. We have six parts that we are going to read. On this, wholesaler and rack jobbers don't read everything. You can just read until the mid paragraph, right? You don't need to read everything. Just the half of it, the paragraph. Out of the paragraph, you're fine. Okay, so we need six volunteers to read one for each vocabulary. 
one for each word. Okay, raise your hand so you I can assign you and you can help me read it. Okay, um, let's begin with Emerson. Emerson, you will help us read private label, large private label. Cesar, help us read read specialty retail, and also this one, Cesar, industrial distributors. Okay, and we need another person for trade distributors, wholesalers, and rack drivers. We need three more people. Need three more volunteers to read. Okay. Me teacher. Me teacher. Uh, you, Mauricio? Yes. Okay. Mauricio, help us read tra trade distributors. Uh -huh. um, yeah. Who can help me read wholesaler distributors? I need one volunteer for wholesaler and rug jobbers. Two more volunteers. You are only going to read, so you don't have to worry about much. <laughs> Let's see. Um, let's see. Juan Carlos Herrera, can you help me read wholesaler distributor, please? Okay, okay teacher, no problem. Okay, thank you. And then me, teacher. Jorge. Help yes. us reading rack jobbers for okay. at the end, right? Um, you guys, um, Juan Carlos and Jorge, you don't have to read the whole only half. When you feel that the idea is complete, then you can stop, all right? <laughs> what you consider. All right, okay. let's let's begin with the first one. Large private label, please. Large private label. Companies with our brand leaders, their category like soy, stationary iron, is is Sometimes, sorry. sometimes buy finished products from a small manufacturer and sell them under their own brand name. The right man to manufacture the these particular products are given to to this contract manufacturer as they can maintain the tier quality control and they own no right over the product they manufacture this state the contract manufacturer the trouble of we're worrying about self or advertising for this product as they are paid for their manufacturing activities and are also using raw material for the same. All right. Pronunciation of this word is advertisement. Okay. Advertisement. All right. Thank you. Okay. So the large private label, the best example we have here could be, I don't know if you have seen, um, Super Selectos has the, his, the, his own brown. They have their own brown. You have like, for example, you have rice, rice, beans, sugar, and you have different brands, right? And then you have yeah. the specific brand from Super Selectos. That is the brand, Super Selectos. So that is one example of large private label. Obviously, Super Selectos, they don't, they don't make rice, right? <laughs> they don't create, they don't raise rice or beans or anything like that. What they do is that they buy it from other manufacturers and they put their name on the product and they sell it under their own brand name, right? And that's the large private label, okay? They don't create the product, they don't make it, they buy it from somebody else and they change the name, they put their own name into the product, right? So that's one of the examples. Let's look at the other word, specialty retail distributors. Okay. 
we had number two, specialty retail. Okay, teacher, especially retail distributors. Uh, these distributors serve in small markets and adopt the title of products that they promote. They raise their markup value by 40 and 50% before selling their product to companies. They are able to carry products from several manufacturers as they are all similar products and can be sold under the same brand. And mm -hmm. industrial mm -hmm. distributors, mm -hmm. they sell several products to different companies from the same industry. This deal with a wide range of product and also provide technical support to the companies they sell their products. Thank you. All right. So we're talking specialty retail and industrial distributors, right? The specialty yeah. retail says they serve, they serve or they work in a small markets, right? And they adopt the title of the product that they promote. Okay. Of course, when you ever when you adopt the 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 title of the product, you can increase the price. Okay. One of Example of this one can be found in distributors like Amazon, for example. In Amazon, you can buy one product from China. It's one product and you can sell it under your name. And your name is going to be the name of the product that you're buying from China. And imagine that you buy the product in China, like in $5. In Amazon, you can raise your markup value by 40 to 50 percent right instead of selling it in five dollars you can sell it in fifty dollars and it's on your specialty your store only sells one product right so you can increase the price as much as you want and then you have industrial distributors right this one is similar but this one they sell more than one product right specialty they only sell one or two products industrial they sell several products another example is also amazon right in this one they sell from all different sellers right and retailers and then you have trade distributors who has trade distributor okay trade trade distributor this distributor deal with Man like plumbing. Plumbing. Distributor, plumbing. Uh, distributor and out of uh, distributor who are connect 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 to a particular connected uh, to a particular industry do it to the special service that they provide to them. This distributor work as middlemen, mid, middlemen, middlemen between manufacturers and telling and do not deal with the consumer or the store directly. All right, thank you. So trade distributors. The key is in the name trade, right? Trade. It says that these people, they are dealing or they are working with tradesmen. Tradesmen are people that provide services, services like plumbing services, right? What are plumbing services? What is a plumber, you ask? A plumber is the person that goes to your house to check the drains. <laughs> if your bathroom is not working, you call the plumber. If the kitchen sink, the, the where you wash your hands, the sink is not working, you call the plumber, right? So those types of services or other like um, mechanical services, right? Now we're gonna read about wholesale layer distributors, please. Okay, the uh, wholesale distributor, distributor, they have exceeded signs. Uh, the time com convenience store have spent spend uh, their business to include a, a wide variety of variety. products, variety 
vari variety of product, mm -hmm. um, ranking for food products to convenience good and are unable to maintain uh, distribution chains directly with the manu manufacturer. Wholesaler, a uh, wholesaler dis distributor uh, work as a vital part of distribution channel and uh, do everything to keep uh, the networking with this distribution of wide range of product to convenient stores, mm -hmm. groceries store and dealers. Very good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And then mm -hmm. rack jobbers, please. Rack jobbers. These people are specialists and work in similar being as special three distributors. So their work responsibility in the distribution channel is quite different. They generally work as distributors for small manufacturers who do not have to expertise to promote and display products in convenience stores or grocery stores. These C stores distributors rent out a specific portion of a store which can be rack section or shelves in a strategic a strategic corner and place the products that they represent in that area. They assume title of the products they sell and are paid by C store only on actual quantity of goods sold, both store owners and rock jobbers and their percent percentage to the products when they are placed on the racks for sale. All right. One example of rack jobbers can be the people when you go to Siman, for example, and you want to buy a cell phone, okay? And you go to the section of cell phones in Siman. You go to the cell phone section in Siman, and you will see sellers. Imagine you will see sellers from Samsung. You will find sellers for Motorola. You will find a sales representative for what? Show me the, the other brand and you will find another sales representative for iPhone, right? So every cell phone brand has a different seller, okay? In that scenario, they are rack jobbers. Each sales representative from each company is a rack jobber because they are renting one space in Siman to sell their product that is not manufactured by Siman. It's manufactured by Samsung, iPhone, and all those companies, right? Apple, those. So they are rack jobbers. They are renting a little space in a store, selling their own products and promoting their own products. Okay? So that's one. And then the wholesale distributor, they they sell literally like they are like like Shein or what is the other one? AliExpress, right? Literally sell everything from things for your house to things, I don't know, to create projects. They sell everything, all the categories, and they sell in big quantities, right? What we call to buy in bulk, right? This expression, when you buy in big quantities, we say, we know it as to buy in bulk, to buy in bulk. It's when you buy in big quantities, right? And then to buy retail is when you want like, you buy like one or two pieces, for example, okay? Just for you to keep it that in mind, okay? This is just some of the common vocabulary related to that. And I want you to check this topic right now. Tonight, we're gonna start using our converse, in our conversation, what we know about what, well, not this one, this one, expressions of certainty, right? There are expressions of certainty and there are expressions of or uncertainty. But the uncertainty, we're not going to watch them tonight. Those are for tomorrow or Monday. Tonight, we're going to focus on expressing certainty. Okay? So take a look at this expression, right? It says, if you are sure or not sure about something, you can use these phrases and expressions to express certainty or uncertainty, right? 
First of all, we're going to check how you can ask for certain, right? You can ask someone, hey, are you sure? Okay, today is one day. Are you sure about it? <laughs> are you sure about it? Because I think it's Thursday, okay? So you are asking for certain. You can use any of these expressions. So my recommendation, repeat after me so that you can practice pronunciation and then you can use them in conversation, okay? So again, are you sure? Are you, are you sure? sure? Mm -hmm. Are you sure about it? Are you sure about it? Mm -hmm. Are you certain about it? Are you certain about it? Mm -hmm. Important. What is it certain? What is it certain? We say third. And okay. this, this doesn't sound, and you only sound the end. Third. Mm. Are you certain about certain. it? Mm -hmm. Are That's you certain, certain about, about it? Mm -hmm. Certain. Yes. Do you think it is true? Do you think it is true? Mm -hmm. Do you think so? Do you think so? Do you think so? Do you think so? How sure are you? How, how, how sure, sure are you? Are you? Mm -hmm. Those are questions that you can ask. When you don't believe completely what the other person is telling you, right? <laughs> when you ask for certainty, that way, right? For example, oh, we're going to get paid on Friday. How sure are you <laughs> that we're going to get paid on Friday, right? Are you certain about that? Because I think we're getting paid until Monday, <laughs> right? So you better keep your money for the weekend, okay? Whenever you want to express that you are doubting or that you are not sure for what the other person is telling you, you can use any of these expressions, right? They are all expressing certain, asking for certain. And then if you want to express that, yes, you are sure of what you're saying, you can use expressions like this one. Yes, I am certain. Or you can say, I'm a hundred percent certain, <laughs> right? It was like, yes, I'm a hundred percent sure. I'm a hundred percent certain. Or you can answer, yes, I am absolutely sure, right? Or you can also say, I have no doubt about it. Do you think it's going to rain someday? I have no doubt about it, <laughs> right? Or I'm sure about it. Do you think it's going to rain tonight? I am sure about it, right? Or I don't think there can be any doubt about, right? Or you can use the shorter version, shorter expressions like, of course, I'm positive. I'm quite sure about it. I am no doubt about it. I am absolutely certain that, right? Those are expressions that you can use for certainty to express that you are sure that something is gonna happen, right? But then also you can use this one. Chances are that. Chances are that. It means this will probably happen. For example, chances are that it's going to rain tonight. Chances are that it's going to rain tonight. Chances are that tomorrow is not going to rain. <laughs> and you have the other expression. Odds are that. It's exactly the same thing. You can say chances or you can say odds. In fact, native speakers, they have a very common question. When they are surprised about coincidences or something like that, they ask you this, what are the odds? Or what are the, I'm writing it in the chat for you guys. What are the odds or what are the chances? Es como preguntar cuál es la probabilidad de que eso pase. Like, what are the odds, right? Like, it's raining, but it's also very hot at the same time. What are the odds, right? <laughs> what are the chances of that happening? Well, if you're in El Salvador, chances are very possible, <laughs> right? So those are native speaker expressions that you want to use, right? So you know how when you are in basic level, you only say, yes, I am sure. Oh, yes. Yes, I am. Oh, yes, I do, right? 
but now you're not basic anymore. You're intermediate, almost advanced. So you gotta start using more native speaker expressions, right? Like these ones that you have in here. These ones, chances are that, or I'm positive about that. Those are very commonly used between native speakers, right? These ones that you have in here. So you, these are for you to know when you think incorporate them, okay? Now, let's see, it's 8.30 right now. Before we continue with the class, I'm going to take attendance because if I don't do that right now, I forget. <laughs> so give me one moment. I'm going to load this attendance list. Please be ready when I call your name to say, just say present, okay? Or here, okay? Carlos Vladimir Rodriguez. Present. Thank you. Dairo Jonathan Fuentes. Eduardo Antonio Magaña. <clears throat> Present. Thank you. Emerson Ulises Monroy. Present. Thank you. Fatima Gabriela Loza. Jonathan Jose González. Present. Thank you. Jorge Antonio Sánchez. Present, teacher. Thank you. Jose Bernardo López. Present. Thank you. Jose Carlos Argueta. Present, teacher. Thank you. Jose César Lemos. Present, teacher. Thank you. Juan Carlos Herrera Delgado. Uh -huh. Thank you. Carla Sofía Argueta. Present. Thank you. Kenia Elizabeth Rodríguez. Mauricio. Present teacher. Thank you. Mauricio Antonio Velázquez. Present teacher. Thank you. Mayra Cecilia Peña. Present. Thank you. Nelly Lilibet Andrade. Present. Thank you. Raúl Antonio Jordán. Sandra Abigail Bonilla. And Wendy Maricela Ramirez. Present teacher, good evening. Good evening, thank you. Okay, so now we're gonna go to the student's manual, right? Give me one moment. I'm gonna share the screen with you guys. And I'm gonna share. The screen, let me know when you see the screen. Yes, Okay, we have a conversation in here between Ellie and Joel, right? So um, we're going to read, whenever we see conversations or readings, we're going to try to do twice, right? Two rounds of people reading. So we have the conversation, we're going to read it twice. The first round, I need two volunteers and two other volunteers for the second round. So raise your hands, please. One person for Ellie and one person for Joel. Jonathan, help me reading Ellie, and Jose Bernardo, help me reading Joel on the first round, please. Go ahead. Okay. I'm thinking about selling physical copies of our audio training program for entrepreneurs. I don't know how to say that. Entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs. Okay. Really? Well, we will need to check with a consultant. I don't have any experience with distribution options. We sell everything directly to the consumers through all our online store. I Me neither. Maybe we could ask around and see how how much profit we could get from a partnership with a retailer store. Let's give a try. And if it is a success, we can sell more from our catalog at stores. Very good. Thank you. We need two more volunteers to read. Same conversation. One person will be Ellie and the other will be Yo. Cesar, help us reading Ellie, please. And we need one more person for Yo. Mayra, please. Go ahead. Okay, I'm thinking about selling physical copies of our audio training program for entry 
seniors. Entrepreneurs. <laughs> Entrepreneurs, okay. Really? Well, we will need to check with a consultant. I don't have any experience with distribution option. We sell everything directly to the customer, drop or online store. Me neither, neither. Uh, maybe we could ask around and see how much profit we could get from a financial with a regular store. Let's give a try. And it is a subset, we can sell more from our catalog at the store. Nice, thank you. Okay, so based on that conversation that we saw between Ellie and Joel, we have the three questions in here. How does Ellie want to expand their business? According to the conversation, how does she want to expand the business? Selling the physical copy of our audio. Exactly. She wants to expand the business like that. Okay. They have an audio training program, but she wants they have it in audio only. She wants to expand it by selling physical copies, right? Number two, do Joel and Ellie have experience with indirect distribution channels? No, they have, they haven't. No, they don't, they right? They don't have, <laughs> no, they don't have experience, very good. Mm -hmm. And number three, what indirect distribution channel are they considering? Which indirect channel are they considering? Maybe a retailer store. Maybe a retailer store, right? A partner like that. Very good. Or they normally, the way they do it, the normal way for them is through online. And now they are looking for a retailer store. Very good. <laughs> nice job with those answers. Okay. So now pay, pay attention to that conversation. We're going to use it later. Now let's match the term to the corresponding meaning. Okay. So we have retailer, we have consultant, distributor, wholesaler, manufacturers, representative. Let's read the first one. I need five people. Each person is going to read one of them. Come on, this is good practice for the ones who want to improve fluency. So let's participate here. Each person is going to read one line and then we're gonna decide which is which, right? Raise your hand, please, so you I can see you. Okay, Jonathan, help us with number one, please. Let's see. An intermediary, intermediary entity in the distribution channel that buys in a bulk and sells to reseller. Mm -hmm. I think I mean, in distributor. Okay, Inter intermediary entity. Entry. An, uh -huh. An intermediary entity. Now the distributor. Remember, they are like the first, the first part. This one says it's an intermediary entity. Who thinks? Uh, the first one, retailer. Uh -huh. Okay, I think this one is going to be wholesaler. Wholesaler. I remember mm -hmm. we said price more, right? Exactly. We said like wholesaler is they buy big and they sell little, right? To resellers. And then you will see things from price more being sold in super selectors. <laughs> Resold, right? Then number two. Who can read number two? Let's see. Somebody can help me read here. Come on, guys. You only have two hours to practice your English. Take every Me opportunity. Maida, please. An agent who supplies goods to store and other business that sell to customers. Consumers. <laughs> to consumers. consumers. <laughs> okay. okay. An agent who supplies goods to stores and other businesses. 
that sell to consumer? What could be that one? Retailer? Mm, let's see. A retailer says, for, it could be, because it says it's an agent, an agent who supplies goods to the stores and to other businesses that sells to consumers. Uh, you know, I think, I don't know, but it could be. Let's leave it at distributor. It Do you think there is, does anyone think different? Does anyone think it could be anything but distributor? Do we agree with distributor for number two? We can leave it like that right now and we can check it later. Let's continue. We will see at the end. <laughs> number three. Yeah. Who can read number three? Me, teacher. Okay, please. Uh, number three, a person or business that sells goods to the public in small quantities for use. Mm, this part is important. In a small quantities is a retailer. Yes, in small quantities, the retailer. Very good. Number four. Who can read number four? Who can help me read number four? Me, teacher. Me, teacher. Okay, please. Uh, who said first? Mauricio, please. Yeah. Mm -hmm. a, pro a professional who provides expert advice in a particular area, such as distribution, logistics, mm -hmm. maybe, maybe consultant. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe consultant. Yeah. Important. It says expert advice. So yeah, probably that is the consultant, right? Makes a lot of sense. And number five, who can read number five? An individual agency or company that sells a manufacturer's product to who sell and retire customers. Mm -hmm. So probably that one is manufacturer's representative, right? Representative. Yeah. Makes more sense. So yeah, we were so you were right, Maida, with number two, <laughs> the distributor. Okay, nice, perfect. We got it, guys. Those were difficult, <laughs> but you got them. All right. So listen, right now, we're going to check. I want you to take a look at the conversation that we just said, right? Um, Ellie is saying that they already have a product, but they want to expand the business, right? So what you are going to do right now is that you are going to go to the breakout rooms. And in groups, you're going to create a similar conversation, okay? More important than what I, what I am looking for is that you include the expressions of certainty that we that we saw, right? The expressions of certainty or the questions for certainty, okay? That if you can add them in your conversation. Again, the context is that one, right? You have somebody has a business or wants to expand a business or has a business idea, and you're going to discuss in the group. Ah, okay. Well, I think we could do this, we could do that, we need this, we need that. Do you think it's going to work or what could happen, right? A whole conversation related. Take this one as an example. Of, don't make it similar. Just take it as an example for you to start your own, right? Important that you include expressions of certainty and questions of certainty and some of the vocabulary that we have seen, all right? Again, the idea is, you are creating a company, a company, or you have a business idea, or you're selling a product, and you're discussing with your coworkers different alternatives, how to sell it, right? Or what what is needed, what question, ask questions, and make make small chat, a small chat, right? Again, you are intermediate four level or almost advanced, so we're expecting that you create intermediate to long conversations, okay? So. I'm gonna give you 15 minutes for this because you're going to create a conversation 
So when we return, when we come back to the session, everyone in the group that participated has to participate in the conversation that you create, okay? So we're gonna open the room and you're gonna have 15 minutes to create your conversation, okay? The rooms are open right now. You can start getting in and creating your conversation. The rooms are open, you can go in.
What happened, Jose? Okay. Fatima, right now your co your classmates are in the in the breakout room working, so we will come back in a few moments. Okay, so you can just stay there right now. Hello, can you hear me? Hi, what happened, Jose Bernardo? I had a problem with my microphone. Can ah. you send me to the room three, please? Yes, just a moment. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. No, you can go. Thank you.
We're just gonna wait 15 seconds for everyone to come back. Okay, now that we're all back, did you finish the conversation or do you need more time? Did everyone finish or do you guys need a little bit more time? Carla and I finished, teacher. Okay, everybody else? Uh, teacher, in our case, uh, we didn't do anything because I had problems with my microphone. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> okay, Um. well, we're going to... Then I'm going to assume because nobody else is saying anything, I'm going to assume everybody else finished except Jose and his team, okay? So let's begin then. We're gonna listen to the first room. We have um, Jonathan Gonzalez, Carla Sofia, and Jorge Antonio. Let us hear no. your conversation, please. Yes, uh, podemos, uh, we can share screen. Yeah, let me stop sharing and then you can share. How's this having participant? Oh, give me a minute. It's supposed to let you, but um, no, it says one, oh, one moment. Oh, host only. Now you can. I see. Mm -hmm. This is our start. <laughs> we have okay. we have a uh, we have a little product. Uh, right. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, hello, Carla. I'm thinking about selling homemade soap. Are you sure? Do you need to know where to sell it? I am thinking of selling in detail in a corner store. Uh, it's a good idea. You could say in the market. Sounds great, but first I need to buy the ingredients like honey, glycerin, and others. Oh, I hope you have success in your business. Thank you. I will sell in detail and then I will become a distributor. Nice. <laughs> good conversation. Now, just remember the pronunciation is ingredient, no, no ingredients, ingredient. Ingredients, okay. Mm -hmm. That's the native speaker pronunciation. Other than that, very good. <laughs> we incorporated you. what we were talking about, expressions and questions for certainties. Very good. Room number one, Jorge and Carla Sofia. Thank, Thank you. you. Nice. So now we're going to listen to room number two. And here we have Cesar Lemos, Juan Carlos Herrera, and Nelly Lillibu. Go ahead, please. Okay. Hi, Nelly. How are you? Hi, I'm fine. Thank you. Hi, Nelly. How Hi. are you? I'm fine. And you? Nelly, tell us, uh, what are you doing? Uh, and what is your life currently? Yes, um, I have some plans. I would like to sell uh, women clothes. Oh, women clothes? Really? Yes. Okay. In uh, in what uh, distribution channel do you do you think uh, is uh, the best way for that? Yes, I think that maybe the best way is um uh sell the product online. Okay, online. Do you have some uh, website or? Are you thinking uh, sell um with the um social uh media? Um uh, yeah, I thinking about the different platforms, maybe um like uh marketplace, um uh, Instagram, Facebook. Really? Uh, are you sure for that? Uh, because the, the people uh, sometimes prefer um, try the, the clothes. Uh, maybe 
maybe it's complicated and and also um, the, the, the give the, the, the product that uh, the people uh, is maybe m maybe um, expensive because uh, some people maybe require uh, the far away. Especially oh. women, they are so complicated when they decide to buy uh, oats. Yeah, is that true? I've been thinking about um, that point. Okay, maybe maybe you should uh, open the, the 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 physical store. Yeah, it's probably a good idea. Okay. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> I was waiting for the closure on that conversation. <laughs> All right, very good. Um, room number two says, and Juan Carlos Nelly, I like that your conversation was very fluent. There were no gaps. You know, you know, a student has been advancing when you see how fluent they can speak, right? Obviously, we're still need to work a little bit more, but right now, for level four intermediate, you're speaking very fluently, so that's really nice. So, congrats on that. Good job on using also the expressions of certainty and the questions of certainty, right? So very good. Thank you. Room number three, very well delivered. Okay, now we're gonna listen to room number three. And here we have, oh no, the room number three, Jose said they, they had problems so they couldn't deliver. We're gonna go with room number four then. And in room number four, we have Jose Romero and Mayra Peña. Go ahead, please. Teacher, we were talking about uh, gas station. We were talking a, a, a lot, but we don't have time for writing our okay. ideas. So, oh, nice. Mayra, where Brilliant. are you? <laughs> Mayra, <laughs> I didn't see Mayra, maybe. You know, but she's here. She was texting me a few minutes ago. She wanted no. to share something on screen. Are you going to share something on the screen, Mayra? Uh, we don't um read a lot because okay. <laughs> we have problem with the internet all right it's a little conversation <laughs> <laughs> okay that's perfect you um they go there's an expression in english we go i'm gonna write it here in the chat for everyone for future reference play it by ear play it by ear means to improvise Right, so you guys are gonna play it by ear right now. Okay, <laughs> go ahead. You can you can improvise. Okay. Hey, Mayra, I am thinking to open a uh, a business. Yes, I think uh, and yes, I think it's a very interesting because. We can um, put a gas station. What yeah, name it's would a, you like? A gas station sounds great. What are you thinking about Maya? Maya gas station? Yes, it's very interesting. I think, uh, but we can, uh, we, we call consult an expert. Yes, because it's a it's a a business that requires a consultant. But are you sure that we have to to look for a consultant at, at the moment? Yes, because we start uh, on the business. It's very important. We we establish um the base of the business, of the company? Yes, I agree, because we have to get money as soon as possible. That's it all, teacher. <laughs> <laughs> well, Joe, you provide you. I know you made it shorter than expected, but at least you didn't give up. You didn't stop. You didn't freeze, right? So listen, um, usually in, in real life situations, 
in um especially in interviews, job interviews or academic interviews, what the person that is interviewing you is looking for is not for you to have the perfect answers all the time, but for you to don't stop talking. The moment you stop talking, you are telling the interviewer that you don't know English, right? But in this case, what's the perfect scenario when, well, we know English, we can improvise something, right? <laughs> Whatever it is, we can improvise a little bit. So very good job, Maida, I must say. Thank you. Okay, so now we're going to go with room number five. Sure. Yes? Uh, I can expose teacher. I'm sorry? Puedes poner, puedes poner teacher. Uh, whom? Es que como, como este con José Bernardo tuvimos problema. Uh -huh. Bueno, yo así lo hice, no sé si estará bien. Ok, Wendy, we can hear you. Go ahead. Um, my company distributed, distributed different products and supermarket, mayonnaise, tracing, hot sauces, y urban spice. Also, in distributor center, we export different products, uh, to Central America. We sell, we work salad story in convenience stories and um, also in social network, um, gas station, in um, social network and gas station in in the customer is important. All right. Finish mm -hmm. teacher. Wendy, very good. <laughs> you, have mm -hmm. a, you have a business plan basically right there, <laughs> right? What we call a business plan. Thank you, Wendy, for sharing. Good job. <laughs> See, Thank this you, is teacher. What I'm talking, this is what I'm talking about. When you know English already, you can improvise something, right? You can make something and, this and deliver. So very good. <laughs> Thank okay, you, Wendy. Teacher. Okay, so now we're going to listen to room number five. And in here we have Emerson Ulises and Kenya Elizabeth. Go ahead, guys, please. Okay. Hi, Kenya. How's it going? Hi, Emerson. Do you find consult for your entrepreneur? No, I don't find the customer because I need someone with experience about the beauty advisor. Yes, it's really important. This consult will have verbal communication skills and passion to listen to customers, sales and customer service skills, and fashion knowledge. Yes, I got it. And uh, it has a bit difficult, but I will have an interview with the consultant next Monday. So I job that we can clarify some points in this regard. So I will tell you about it next time. Okay, good luck. Yes, thanks. <laughs> All right, very good, Emerson, Kenya, you delivered. Exactly what we're looking for, right? Including the expressions. It was very fluent, right? To the point with the conversation. So thank you. Very good job. And now we're going to listen to room number six. We have Edward and Mauricio Velasquez. Go ahead, please. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Can you hear me very well or no? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's time. Okay, first of all, I would like to, to tell you I have seen on, on Facebook uh, that you, you you know you can uh, tell me a song about this to is I want to become an entrepreneur because you are very intelligent in business. And I would like to know is it you could you could give me some advice. Okay. Well uh, what kind what kind of product uh, would you like to introduce? Okay, in, in, I am thinking to to offer both products in the same time because I would like to to be a retailer 
and also I would like to offer uh, the product and the service in the same time because I am an electrician. Okay. Do you do you have uh, do you do you need uh, uh, any distribution channel? What kind? Yes, obviously is the reason I am uh, talking with you because I need you will my wholesaler and I would like to offer the, the product and, and my computer because I really have uh, knowledge in my, uh, using my computer and using the social media. So I really thank you for your advice and I would like to know if you had a, a list of the product that you had and we can work together. Okay. I see. I see. Mm, I. <laughs> Veré cómo te ayudo. No, no sé. I see what I can do. <laughs> I see what I can do. Okay, thank you so much. Okay. I really appreciate it. <laughs> okay. Nice job, room number six. You guys were very, very fluent in that conversation. Also, your intonation was really nice. It sounded like you were asking for help, Edward, and Marisa was sounding very interested in seeing how he could help. Okay? You, you used the expressions of certainty in that case and the questions of certainty, right? So very good. Nice job, room number six as well. Okay, guys. So now we're going we're gonna to check something from the student manual. I'm going to share the screen with you. And we are going to watch a video. It's not a fun video, so you're gonna have to pay attention. <laughs> this is adult classes, right? So we're gonna go here, we're gonna go to YouTube and we're gonna check consider the key considerations for the direct versus indirect channel approach. Now, the word key means important. It, key considerations is the same as saying important considerations, okay? So I'm going to share the screen with you, the YouTube video. And listen, we are going to do this twice. We're going to watch the video two times. The first time, we're going to watch it only looking for vocabulary, okay? First time we watch this video, we're only looking for vocabulary, okay? I want you to, you're going to have subtitles in English, of course, and I want you to write at least two or three words that are new to you from the video, okay? First time, don't focus so much on the context or on the information that he's sharing. I want you to focus on finding vocabulary. So your, your homework for this video, the first time we watch it right now, is to write down vocabulary, words that you don't know or that you don't read, okay? So let's watch it right now. On our behalf, has a long tradition in the software industry. For some software companies, this indirect channel has been a major contributor to global success. But for most software companies, making it work remains a constant struggle. I'm Hans Peter Beck, and in this video, I will discuss the main difference between the direct and the indirect go to market approach and how you can make the indirect approach work in your favor. With a direct go-to-market approach, you employ and you pay all the resources required for finding, winning, making, keeping and growing happy customers. The benefit of the direct approach is the full control you enjoy and your ability to make fast changes to the way you interact with the market. The drawback is the massive long-term investments this approach requires and the steadily growing organization you need to manage on your path to global market leadership. In the indirect go-to-market approach, you must first find and recruit independent companies that then find, win, make, keep and grow happy customers providing solutions with your product as a core component. Such independent companies operate in their own name, at their own expense, and at their own risk. 
The benefit of the indirect approach is the enormous scalability potential. The drawback is the added complexity of managing independent companies between you and your customers. And the additional time it takes to recruit and enable the channel partners before you can book any significant revenue. When you choose the indirect go-to-market approach, then you introduce a third-party business model into your own business model. Your ability to manage this additional layer of complexity is the key competence that will help you become successful with the indirect channel. Now, I strongly recommend using the business model framework and terminology introduced by Alexander Osterwalder in his seminal book, Business Model Generation. Using the Osterwalder framework, your business model with a direct channel is illustrated to the left, while the business model using the indirect channel is illustrated to the right. Introducing an indirect channel into your business model may very well have an impact on all the other building blocks in your business model. Now, keeping the following issues in mind will help you become successful with the indirect channel approach. Customers of your channel partners are still your customers, even when the invoicing relationship is now through the partners. You want to create and maintain brand awareness with your customers and ensure that they can see value in the fact that the channel partner solutions are built with your core technology. Your channel partners are not your customers. They are your channel to your customers. Recruiting and managing channel partners now become a key activity and a core competence you must acquire and grow. You now need two value propositions, one for your customers and one for your channel partners. Your channel partner value proposition is based on your understanding of the business model opportunity that you offer them. With the indirect channel approach, it is not only your product that must be attractive and competitive. You must also help your channel partners build and scale a successful business model with your product as a key component of their customer value proposition. Compared to the direct go-to-market approach, the indirect go-to-market approach generally requires more time and additional investments up front. But it pays off as your channel partners gain momentum and grow their business with your product. This series of videos on building successful partner channels was brought to you from Copenhagen, my hometown. All right, I like the way he speaks because it's very slow, <laughs> well pronounced. All right, so let me hear the words that you found for vocabulary, guys, one by one. Which words did you find? There must have been a word that you don't uh, know. Mm -hmm. Throwback. Throwback. Is that Robo, this one calls my attention? How do you spell it? Mm -hmm. Listen, a throwback is it T H R O W? No, D R no D yeah, D R A W, yes. Yes, or no. draw. <laughs> a draw. Oh, it's not a throwback. It's a drawback. <laughs> I'm gonna write. That's I'm gonna write it. I'm gonna watch it. Here, watch it. I'm gonna write it here in the chat. I was. I was telling you. That one calls my attention. I was telling you throwback, but it's not that one. You were saying this one, drawback, right? The second yes. one. You were asking for the second one, drawback. Drawback means to retire from some place. To go away from some place. Okay. I'm going to draw back right now. Bye bye. Okay. To draw back is to leave, to go back. Right. Oh, uh -huh. Entonces, it's like retirarse, draw back. Right. 
and then also it can be it can be negative or positive depending on the situation <laughs> okay next approach approach is one way and you go closer acercamiento approach okay oh that's a good approach talking talking your problems is a better approach than hiding your problems right okay another one i don't know how can i pronounce this but revenue revenue like that revenue revenue, mm -hmm. revenue. revenue okay. is revenue is similar to profit ganancia mm. revenue mm -hmm. similar to profit ganancia Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Did you find another word? Be hard. I'm sorry? Be hard. Be hard. That one is actually, it's in be hard. Oh, the complete expression is in be hard of. It means in representation of. Okay. For example, I am giving you classes in be hard of in support. Right. I'm giving you classes in representation of in support, okay? In behalf of, or for example, your boss. Imagine that you are your boss assistant, right? And your boss doesn't wanna talk to the other person. So he tells you, okay, Carla, you go and talk to the other person on my behalf. He's telling you to represent him, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, any other one? Folding. How do you spell it? Folding. How, how do you spell it? The how do you spell it? Letter by letter. Is it F? F O L D I N G. Or you can write it in the chat. <laughs> I don't know if you said folding or holding. Oh, building. Oh, building means to construct. Build up. There are two meanings. The noun, the noun for building, edificio, and the verb for building, construyendo. It can be a noun and it can be a verb. Right? Mm -hmm. Building blocks. Okay. Any other one? I have one for you guys. I don't know if you saw it. Framework. I don't know if you saw that one. What? Framework is the same as a structure. A structura. Framework is the same as a structure. The framework. Okay. And then invoicing. I don't know if you saw this one, guys. Invoicing, facturación, right? Related to businesses or charges. Invoicing, facturación. Okay. If we don't have any other, we're going to watch the video one more time. Teacher, we're gonna... it's, it's struggle. It's struggle. Struggle. It's pro it's, and a struggle is a problem. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. A struggle is a problem. For example, I struggle to pay attention in class. <laughs> I struggle to do exercise every day, right? I'm saying that I have problems doing that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. So right now we're going to watch the video one more time. This time it's not for vocabulary. This time we're going to watch it and I want you to pay attention to the context. What is the man talking about? What is the topic of the video? What can you talk about it? Okay. At the end of the video, everyone has to participate. Each of you, one by one, has to participate and make a comment about something that you understood from the video. Okay. Don't have you don't have to give me a summary of all the video, the five minutes. No. You just have to make one comment about the video, something that pulled your attention or something that you found interesting. Okay from the video. So we're gonna watch it one more time. This time is for context, all right? So let's pay attention and try to take notes to make your comments at the end. Third-party companies to find, win, 
make key using a channel of independent third-party companies to find win make keep and grow happy customers on our behalf has a long tradition in the software industry for some software companies this indirect channel has been a major contributor to global success but for most software companies making it work remains a constant struggle I'm Hans Peter Beck and in this video I will discuss the main difference between the direct and the indirect go-to-market approach and how you can make the indirect approach work in your favor with a direct go-to-market approach you employ and you pay all the resources required for finding winning making keeping and growing happy customers the benefit of the direct approach is the full control you enjoy and your ability to make fast changes to the way you interact with the market the drawback is the massive long-term investments this approach requires and the steadily growing organization you need to manage on your path to global market leadership in the indirect go-to-market approach you must first find and recruit independent companies that then find win make keep and grow happy customers providing solutions with your product as a core component such independent companies operate in their own name at their own expense and at their own risk the benefit of the indirect approach is the enormous scalability potential the drawback is the added complexity of managing independent companies between you and your customers and the additional time it takes to recruit and enable the channel partners before you can book any significant revenue when you choose the indirect go-to-market approach then you introduce a third-party business model into your own business model your ability to manage this additional layer of complexity is the key competence that will help you become successful with the indirect channel. Now, I strongly recommend using the business model framework and terminology introduced by Alexander Osterwelder in his seminal book, Business Model Generation. Using the Osterwelder framework, your business model with a direct channel is illustrated to the left while the business model using the indirect channel is illustrated to the right. Introducing an indirect channel into your business model may very well have an impact on all the other building blocks in your business model. Now, keeping the following issues in mind will help you become successful with the indirect channel approach. Customers of your channel partners are still your customers even when the invoicing relationship is now through the partners you want to create and maintain brand awareness with your customers and ensure that they can see value in the fact that the channel partner solutions are built with your core technology your channel partners are not your customers they are your channel to your customers Recruiting and managing channel partners now become a key activity and a core competence you must acquire and grow. You now need two value propositions, one for your customers and one for your channel partners. Your channel partner value proposition is based on your understanding of the business model opportunity that you offer them. With the indirect channel approach, it is not only your product that must be attractive and competitive. You must also help your channel partners build and scale a successful business model with your product as a key component of their customer value proposition. Compared to the direct go-to-market approach, the indirect go-to-market approach generally requires more time and additional investments up front but it pays off as your channel partners gain momentum 
and grow their business with your product. This series of videos on building successful partner channels was brought to you from Copenhagen, my hometown. I don't know how that last part is relevant, but okay. <laughs> okay, so let me hear your comments, guys. What did you find interesting about the video or what did you write? Any comment that you can make? Jonathan, please. Uh, okay, teacher, in my opinion, the video was about indirect and direct channels and how to have abroad and how to be successful in your company or how to create uh, your company to be. That is one way to put it, yes. That is one of the ideas that they were expressing. Very good. Thank you, Jonathan. Who else? Let's see. Jose Romero, please. Okay, teacher. What I understood was that he was trying to explain the difference between the direct channel and the indirect channel. So, however, he explained the the advantage of both. Advantage. So, the advantage of both. Mm -hmm. That's that's what I understand that in both Perfect. there are yeah. advantage. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's another point that they mentioned there. There are advantages in both. It's not like one is bad and the other one is better, right? They are different. That's the same. Thank you, Jose. Who else? Let's see. Let me hear your comments. Me teacher. Go ahead, please. Okay. Um I understood the he talked about the sales for the software. Yes. And the venta vantage and advantage. For the different ways, uh, for the, uh, the distribution channel, in direct and indirect. But uh, he talked about, uh, if more, um, for, well, the finally for the, um, uh, product, productor or, is maintain your uh, happiness in your customers and uh, he explains uh, for example when you um, make the use the direct uh, sales you can explain uh, for your customers what is the use for the different um, qualities or or the different uses for the software when mm -hmm. you you buy in in the different uh, in the indirect channel uh, you maybe could be problem with the use but the different uh, companies um can be building the different strategies for the um, uh, well, he showed the the uh, the what is the the <clears throat> sorry <laughs> um, how how I say uh, a schema framework. Yeah, it, but he showed the different uh, ways for the mm -hmm. two to weigh the direct and indirect sales and explain that company may, uh, can be uh, building the different strategy for uh, have a success in that both uh, ways for the distribution channel. Exactly, that's good, Harley, thank you, very thorough. Okay. So he was basically telling at the beginning of the video, right? Many different companies, they sell software products. But just because the bigger companies in the industry, they use one approach, it doesn't mean necessarily that it's the best approach for all the other smaller companies that they sell software products, right? Very good, everyone who participated. Very good points that you were mentioning there. All right. So now we're going to go back to the student model. And in here, we have this exercise. 
So I want you to look at the chart, right? And then we're gonna read examples. Because these ones, you're gonna deliver them. You're gonna discuss them in partner, in the groups. So take it, pay attention to the distribution chart, okay? There are three distribution channels, three ways, let's say. The first one, direct channel, the producer sells directly to the consumer, okay? I create the product, I manufacture the product, and I sell it directly to my customer, right? Nothing else, no intermediate. The second one is retail channel. The producer or the, or the manufacturer sells the product to a retailer. As, what is a retailer? A store that sells small quantities, right? And then the retailer sells to the consumer, to the final consumer, right? And then we have wholesale channel, very similar to this one, but in this case, the producer or manufacturer is going to sell first and the biggest quantity to the wholesale or distributor. And the wholesale or distributor is going to resell the product to the retailer. And the retailer is going to resell it again to the consumer, right? So that's the difference. Direct channel, producer to consumer. Retail, producer to retailer and then consumer. And then wholesale, producer to wholesale, to retailer to consumer, okay? Those, these two last ones, they are indirect channels and this one is the direct one, okay? So here's what you're going to do right now. You're going to go to the breakout room. I, you can take a picture of this part or you can take, uh, a screenshot, right? Picture or screen as you wish of this part and then of this one. You're going to go into the breakout rooms for seven minutes, for seven minutes, and you're going to discuss your answers to these questions here, one to six, okay? And then you're going to decide, okay? For example, Amazon sell Kindle. Kindles are the book, the similar to iPad, but they are only for reading and they, Amazon sells them. It's as an Amazon brand. They sell the Kindles to customers through its own platform that is Amazon, right? Do you think this is direct, retail or wholesale, right? We're going to discuss one by one with your groups, but there is a catch, okay? There is a catch, there's a but here. What you are going to do is that you are going to explain why you think for example, in number one, Amazon sells Kindles to its customers through its own platform. Oh, we think it's direct channel, producer yeah. to consumer. You have to explain why you think it is, okay? So we're going to go into the breakout rooms. You're gonna have seven minutes to discuss this with your partners. Fill out from one to six. And when we come back, you're going to say, okay, we think number one is this and this because you have to explain why you think it is, right? It's not only giving the answer, it's explaining why you selected that answer, okay? The rooms are open right now. You can go in, you're gonna have seven minutes starting right now. Let's go in, discuss with your partners, answer the questions and explain why you decide those answers. Let's go into the room. Let's go into the rooms, please, so you can discuss with your partners. Emerson, Fatima, what is waiting for you in room number four? Let's go into the rooms, please.
just 10 more seconds for everyone to come. Okay, we're all back now. So let's hear to room number one. Let's hear room number one first. Uh, we have Jose Romero, Juan Carlos Herrera, Mayra Peña, and Kenya Elizabeth. Okay, so I want to hear what you selected for one, two, three, and four. And each of you explain why you selected that option. Okay, uh, can I share my screen? Yes. Let me stop sharing my. Go ahead. Juan Carlos. Well, uh, okay. Um, the first one uh, is direct channel uh, because the the Amazon is the 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 own for this device uh, mm -hmm. and sell directly uh, uh, directly uh, uh, to the customer. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the, the second one is a uh, channel uh, retail uh, because um, they uh, buy uh, different products uh, and sell uh, them in their stores. That's right. Yes. Okay. The next is a uh, uh, indirect channel, the who seller, uh, mm -hmm. because uh, uh, they uh, purchase in bulk. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the four, uh, Dell uh, computer uh, sells through the uh, on online platform is. is in our call center, uh, both are uh, uh, there, there. Okay, all right, that's mm -hmm. good. With number four, we're good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Room number one, well explained. Nice. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Maida, for sharing. Thanks, Juan Carlos, for the explanation. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we're going to listen to room number two. Give me this a moment. And in room number two, we have Cesar Lemos. Jonathan Gonzalez and Juan Jose Herrera. You are going to explain number three, four, oh no, four, five, and six, please. Okay, teacher. Juan, can you uh, share, please? Okay. Number four, we choose a direct channel because Dell self without third channel they sell their computers in their own channel um in online platform and their call center and it's for them also right it's, but it's their own it's their own platform and their own call center right yes okay okay Okay, the number five teacher, we select a uh, retired channel because in, in this case, uh, retail. The gap, retail channel, mm -hmm. yes, retail channel. Uh, the gaps um, buy uh, from the different manufacturing uh, and after that, uh, they sell uh, in their stores and for that reason uh, we have an uh, uh, intermediate between the producer and the final consumer exactly they act as an intermediary very good and number six yes. and number six we select a wholesale channel wholesale um, wholesale sorry mm -hmm. 
also kind of because uh, the uh, grocer supplies a line of independent grocery store with uh, purchase in bulk. And uh, we have, um, um, uh, I don't know, who shares in bulk is with the uh, major products, right? Mm -hmm. And for that reason, after that, uh, they um sell that product to different uh radio retails, and after that, that radios uh final sell the product to the final consumer. Exactly, it goes like that, right? They buy it from the producer, and they buy it in bulk, and then they yeah. sell it little by little to the other stores right to the retail stores and finally the retail stores they go and sell it to the final consumer nice job very well done room number two also thank you okay guys because of the time we're gonna stop here we're not gonna continue but we will continue practicing tomorrow um we have enough time to take attendance for the last time today so please be ready when i call your name say present or say here as you prefer okay um, Carlos Vladimir Rodriguez. Present, present, teacher. Thank you. Dairo Jonathan Fuentes. Eduardo Antonio Magaña. Me. Thank you. Emerson Ulises Monroy. Present, miss. Thank you. Fátima Gabriela Loza. Jonathan. Thank you, Fátima. Jonathan Jose Gonzalez. Present, Miss. Thank you. Jorge Antonio Sanchez. Present, here. Thank you. Jose Bernardo Lopez. Present. Thank you. Jose Carlos Argueta. Present, teacher. Thank you. Jose Cesar Lemus. Present, teacher. Thank you. Juan Carlos Herrera. Present, teacher. Thank you. Juan Jose Herrera. Present, teacher. Thank you. Carla Sofía Argueta. Present. Thank you. Kenia Elizabeth Rodríguez. Mauricio Antonio Velázquez. Present, teacher. Thank you. Mayra Cecilia Peña. Present. Thank you. Nelly Lilibet Andrade. Present. Thank you. Raúl Antonio Jordán. Sandra Abigail Bonilla. Wendy Maricela Ramirez. Okay, that's going to be it for tonight. Uh, Dairo Jonathan, if you can stay for uh, for assessment. Present. Thank you, Wendy. Todos los demás se pueden desconectar. Have a good night. Get some sleep. Bye. Recharge Bye. batteries. Bye. And Bye. I will see you all Bye. tomorrow. Bye. Bye. Have a good night. Sleep tight. <laughs> sleep tight. Good night. Good night. See you tomorrow, guys.